Okay, so last video, we were dealing with the request context, which didn't send the right information. The leave call basically didn't send the right information. It didn't send the request context with all the stuff that we wanted. I didn't quite figure out whether that is necessary or not. We were able to bypass it because we can still send the message of leave call. We just don't have a few of the other things that we could need. Now I feel like we're getting to the point where I might need to be able to test this on three devices, so like four devices and see, do they actually match or what happens? Actually, I just realized we could maybe run that and maybe we could run that too. Because we need to, when a user leaves the call, the reality or the real way that this should be handled is that when a user presses leave, we shouldn't be able to be reconnected with the user that we just left the call from. So that is logic that we need to handle. And I think that the leave button could also act as like a dislike button. Once you press leave, it also triggers an event that sends a dislike to the profile that you're leaving so that you don't get matched with that user again. Let's say that you have a really bad conversation with someone you just, there's even the possibility of something feeling unsafe. I hate talking about that because I really don't want that to be a possibility, but it is a possibility that someone won't feel safe in a conversation with someone else. And so when you press leave, then you don't want to again get matched like three days later or ever again with that person. The leave button needs to do that. But at the same time, in this stage that we're at, if I do that right now, I only have two devices, which means that if this one leaves and dislikes this one, then they will never get connected again if the code works the way that it should. But that means I can't keep testing the app unless I delete the dislike, which I can do. Actually, I can do that. So I don't know what, what the next step is because I'm not fully confident that this works. I'm just sort of like semi-confident that it works. And we also need a back button so that we get to like a home page of, of some kind. But do we even have a home page? All right, so I think I've figured out the issue seems to be that leave call is not sent properly. I don't think it's sent to or through the WebSocket or something, which means that it doesn't have all of the context that it should have, like the it should have a lot more data to it. But right now we're just sending like a very simple message. And because we don't send it through the WebSocket probably, it means that we don't have a connection to the WebSocket, which means that we were not then able to reconnect to it and send a message back to the client, which means that the client never receives the left call response from the database after someone leaves a call. So the idea is if I press leave call, then we trigger a function in the database that lets us leave the call, but then that also sends a payload back to me and to the other user that says left call. And when the other user gets that, they should also get popped out of the call. But right now we're not able to receive anything back. So we just end up in the state of like, I don't know what happened. That is because we don't send it through the WebSocket, I don't think. But I don't know why that is because join matchmaking, we do send through the WebSocket and we're able to send a message back. So there's some there's something going on. It works for some things, but not for all things. And I think maybe if, if I'm to guess here, then my guess would be that this has something to do with with set state. I think that we somehow clear the WebSocket and then initiate the WebSocket in a different place with a different thing. I don't I don't quite know. I don't understand it. I shouldn't pretend like I even do. But I'm gonna try this now. This should be an updated version of sending the leave call thing through the WebSocket. If that works, then we should actually have a request context with it, which we can check on the CloudWatch logs. So we're gonna do that waiting for left call response. We did not receive a left call response, but I think that is because WebSocket handler doesn't know how to handle yeah, error unbound location, local variable connection ID is not associated. That's fine. Hmm, actually, that's not fine. Well, raw event clear state. 
Okay, so the clear state cannot send it through the WebSocket. This video is sponsored by Savala. Savala is an all-in-one platform as a service that's kind of like Heroku, but modern with the 2025 standards that developers expect and without all of the limits. You can deploy applications, databases, object storage, and static sites all in one place, have unlimited collaborators, enjoy parallel builds, and you only pay for what you use. No seat license, no fixed tiers, no hidden fees. And it runs on Google Kubernetes engine, and you can select any of the 25 available regions. So performance and reliability Ability are solid and static content is delivered through Cloudflare's Global Edge network. You also get managed databases, object storage, and a really clean developer friendly UI with Git based deploys, preview environments, and one click templates. The nice thing is that everything is under one roof, so you're not stitching together multiple different services. And you can try it out right now with $50 in free credits at savalo.com or you can check out the link in the video description. And thank you so much to Savala for sponsoring this video. All right, it seems like the connection ID is null right now. When I tried to set it manually here to just send it in the payload, even if it's like a bare message to the back end, it still says null here. So I need to debug this somehow, but I've spent like three hours now. I'm not gonna spend any more time today. I'm gonna take a break. I'm back at my parents' holiday house and I've been fishing. I actually caught this morning like six cod on no five cod on five casts and now we're going to continue with the app last time we were struggling with the connection id thing for the websocket so it seems like we're not connected to the websocket when we're doing the leave call function it seems like we're not connected to the websocket so we need to figure out a way to either reconnect us or first of all see are we connected and can we get a hold of that connection id if we can do that then we can probably solve a few things so let's go all right just spent like what is it an hour and 15 minutes trying to set up so that I can test without having my phone, which is what I'm filming on. One device I'm just simulating in the cloud shell. So that took an hour. All right. Uh, <clears throat> I've been sitting now for like two hours trying to fix this thing and I can't seem to get it to work, which again, This whole thing just makes me feel like I should have just gone with making my own REST API and just hosting it on a server somewhere. So I didn't have to deal with all of this because all of this is basically just AWS shit, like AWS bullshit that I'm dealing with. Obviously you can get this to work. So it's not like, it's not AWS's fault. I'm not blaming anyone else but me, but it's just that because they've set it up to be a certain way and handle certain things. It means that I don't understand it well enough to actually be able to use it. And it means that I just, everything that I add, everything that I change, I just run into errors after errors after errors. So I don't really get anywhere, I feel like sometimes. I'm just like constantly debugging things. Like the leave call thing sort of works, but it's just that it doesn't work the way that it works if I do a workaround, if that makes sense, then it works. But it breaks in other areas. Oh, it's so annoying. I'm so tired. Oh, fuck. Because for some reason, when I start the app and I send the join matchmaking request, we do send the proper message with all the things that are needed. The same thing that when we send the disconnect request, which maybe is not something that we send from the client side, I don't know. But when the disconnect is received, we also get the connection ID. But for some reason, when we send the specific call, leave call ID, we don't get the freaking message or the, uh, we don't get a connection ID. It just makes me so tired. So yeah, I'm gonna have to come back to this and um, 
we'll see if I can fix it in the next video. Thank you for watching and uh, I hope I'll see you in the next one.